movie notes on the pilot Battle for Survival 2021 film 25 April 2024 viewing. I'm Tana Stignardi, she, her, hers of Seattle. I watch this alone in this room on one of my laptop computers that has a D DVD CD disc slot in the computer itself. Don't have to plug anything in. And I viewed it today, Thursday 25 April 2024 in this room alone. All the way through, I did go and get a snack at one point and pause it so it didn't keep playing when I went to go get food. And there was Stubbsy the gray squirrel outside and she was, and there was another one um, with her. But she was like, I'm ready for my Siberian parka. I know you're watching a movie about Russians. So I just wanted to let you know I still want to be a Siberian squirrel. So this movie is about uh, Russian uh, Russians. Uh, during World War II. So this is my description. I said, uh, is a Russian language, Russian language shared biographical film about two Russian soldiers fighting Nazis during World War II and whose fighter jet goes down after being attacked and they attempt to survive in the conditions of an Arctic winter. Oh, there's squirrels running around out there right now. They're like, Siberian Parkers, mom. King Andre Minikov of Russia and Queen Tannis and his queen, Tannis Vianardi of Russia. Take us, mom. Stubbsy really wants to be the dubbed the squirrel of the coronation for my Andre, King of Russia, and me, his queen of Russia, Tannis Vianardi. Okay. So, my grandpa. Roger was a fighter pilot stationed in Japan during the Vietnam War. I get confused in there. Somebody, so, so, was one of my grandparents active in World War II? I don't think so. But I, they were alive. Um, and actually I've asked my grandma Connie about, so Grandpa Roger was married to Grandma Connie. Grandpa Roger's dead. Grandma Connie's alive. And one of the times I went to visit her, this is related, right? This is in a sense, it's getting to see um, a portrayal of something, of the career that one of my grandparents took. Was me. And so I was talking to my grandma Connie one time, and I went up to visit her. And I asked her what it was like during World War II. She was born in the Great Depression. Uh, she lived in the United States of America. And so I, I asked her what it was like, and kind of, which is kind of vague. So what what specifically is like what were maybe some of the biggest or like the biggest difference between now like so um this was in the past year or two that I've had this conversation and the, so the biggest difference between now and during the war and she said that news took a while to get to people even in America right because the war wasn't fought on American soil so um, there wasn't you know in this movie they're fighting on Russian soil um, in the Western Front because right? Western Russia is part of Europe or borders Europe depending on what, what country Russia um, what, what what continent people classify Russia as and so she said something um, that might, you know, might have been true outside of the United States of America as well as inside the United States of America. So how was the war actually felt on American soil? And she said, um, very different than today, news took about a week to arrive. And I was like, yeah, the United States of America would be down and out day one, war over, defeated if there were World War War, war right? And that was, same news takes a week to travel like to reach its destination of like you know the news news it's like that's that's very different <laughs> these days my right? instant gratification and social media and stuff like that I was like um, it was a little bit of a wake up of like how not ready Americans are for war these days um or if, if they're reliant on those technologies and those means of getting information instant gratification can be a sure way out in certain survival s settings um so that, that came to mind when i was watching this this was the case of week takes or news takes much longer than a week to arrive at the destination right is the person even alive that kind of stuff and so there's this plane and they go out and it gets shot down 
or not shot down, it, it goes down, um, it gets shot and then goes down for fuel reasons. And there are two people, one of them perishes, the pilot survives, um, but it's kind of the story to the end and kind of it goes to the end of the war and kind of the role of amputees in um russian amputees right there were a number it turned out to be a number of them that lost their feet or and or legs and continued um being fighter pilots in the war because the war was that long um and so is there anything it was based on the true story so i decided to describe that as shared biographical film right so it's not the story necessarily of one person it's the story of many people and whenever something like that or to a true story then there's multiple people so then some things are changed to make it understandable for the big screen so it's based on true events but not right the biography of one person um and so one of those things where uh that is different than the real story is the scene where the blacksmith his wife and daughter are hanged that did not happen but it helps close it for a motion picture all right and then the corresponding scene later about one of the guys that was living with him that scene is affected too for the real stories so, so it, and it, sometimes those things are changed for the movie because people nowadays just watching this for entertainment might not understand that whatsoever versus how it's portrayed the alternative path that's portrayed in the movie for kind of the closed story with looping back around um is more understandable by today's terms and especially instant gratification culture which would be like that's way too deep for me man <laughs> the how it actually went but um yeah so there we go and then this is one fr fr from my friend andre my king of Russia, me and me, his queen of Russia. Uh, he says, "Give us, give us some light, babe. Give the, give the, give the world of Russia one of my ideas, your ideas, our ideas." So it's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> you guys know some of my ideas are kind of interesting. Um, so Wolverine. A Wolverine is said to have been making headlines recently, so I got to include the wolverine and especially in regards to amputees so a wolverine has been depicted as being able and capable of regeneration so if they sustain an injury they recover a wolverine has been portrayed that way so can we expand that to be all wolverines <laughs> and then my andre Mithal, my Russian Andre Mithal, wants to kill the wolverines and take their fur and make a, a, a mat because there's lots of them because they can spontaneously regenerate in a cafe. And so there's furs and he wants there to be a war and to canoodle me, make sweet, sweet love to me on the wolverine pelts. And he believes in, I believe and we believe, better yet, this is an idea, that the killing of the wolverines of spontaneous regeneration type will transfer those regeneration capabilities to injured soldiers. To the, yeah, Russian Siberian Wolverines go down for Siberian amputees. Mm, yeah. Transference of capabilities to, to some humans. There we go. So, I'm Tennessee and Artie, she, her, hers of Seattle. Uh, it meshes well with a uh, modern cinema in recent headlines about Wolverines. You know, just collide them and yeah. Kind of stuff. So my movie notes on the pilot, A Battle for Survival, 2021 film, 25 April 2024. Viewing.